Okay, I'll go back. All right, Matthew 16, 18 through 19, it says, And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or death will not overpower it by preventing the resurrection of the Christ. And I will give you the keys, authority of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose, permit, and declare lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. Now, we pray this all the time. I'm sure you hear us in this church. I bind you, Satan. In other words, I forbid you from having operation and whatever because we have that authority. We have that right to forbid, and we have that right to permit. And it says here, um, but he said, I will build my church. And that word church there, when you look it up, is the word ecclesia. Now, Dutch Sheets has the most amazing teaching on ecclesia, on the church. And um, so I really encourage you. You can probably go up on YouTube. Uh, first time I ever heard it, him speak on that was at, at Global Spears uh, a couple years ago, right? But I Googled it. I Googled. I just wanted to see what, like, if you Google it, what it says. And so I'm going to read to you about the ecclesia. So he, remember, he says, I will build. He said, on this rock, I will build my church. It wasn't for just a sweet little gathering and for, you know, a cook-off. And, and, and listen, that's all fine. But that's not who we are. And so the Ecclesia was a principal assembly of the democracy of ancient Athens. The assembly was responsible for declaring war, military strategy, and electing an, um, the strategio and other officials. It was responsible for nominating and electing magistrates. And, um, and so then the, the other portion, as you can see, they were called out to govern. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. We are not just called to be nice little Christians who turns our cheek when someone's getting us upset. It's more than that. It says here, uh, for centuries before the New Covenant was written, the Greeks were using the word ecclesia to describe a group of citizens called out for governmental purposes. They met on a regular basis, and they voted, and they discussed new law proposals and military strategy. There was a ga they gathered around the empire, the Roman Empire, and, or king, to hear and record his words, and they were to see that his will and desires were implemented across the kingdom. We are called to implement his desires across the kingdom. Right. And it says, this is how we as the ecclesia are called to function as, under, uh, as rulers under the supreme uh, ruler. We are to decree his voice. And, um, and to decree those things. In Genesis 1, uh, 26, it says that we are called to rule. We're called to subdue. I just want to get it. I always say it backwards. Um, we're called to, hold on a second here. Um, and God blessed them, us, and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man and have dominion over the fish of the seas, the bird of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. He's saying, see, I've given you, you know, this authority. So he's called us to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, to have dominion, right? So th th these are strong words, all right? So we all have that authority in us. You know, a lot of times people think that, well, I don't really have that in me. It's just for a certain group of people. Mm -mm. That we all have that authority to rule and to govern. So we start in our home. Well, first of all, we start in our own lives. Then in our home. Then in our workplace. I mean, majority of y'all work, right? So we have that right to pray. We have that right to degree the thing. When I, and I've shared this here before, but when I worked for the airlines, I was in a department that was evil. <laughs> it was evil. And so how many of you ever worked in a place where you felt like you were in hell? Okay. Well, it was hell on earth. And when I got this job, I thought, you have got to be kidding me. But I knew I needed to transfer out. So here's the thing. I was in a situation that I needed to transfer because I would have gotten fired there. So I knew I needed to transfer out. But it what I, I really felt it was a good thing, but it, it seemed, when I got there, it seemed to be worse than where I was. But it was, God was, this was an open door, and it was hell. <laughs> and I thought, you have got to be kidding me, God, you know? And he said, well, what I want you to do is pray. 
I had to be at the job at 6.30 in the morning at LaGuardia Airport. I would get up at 3 or 3.30, and I would pray in tongues for a half hour. I would read the word and decree the word because I was afraid to go to work because it was hell because it, it, it's just so dark. And I thought, Lord, and it seemed so overwhelming to me. And it seemed like how in the world is there going to be any kind of breakthrough? And uh, I, I didn't, you know, this is in, in 1980, you know, or 79, uh, no, maybe 80, 81. I, you know, they didn't have YouTube or as I used to call it, YouTunes, YouTube, and different things that we can get a message right away. You had to really get on your face before the Lord. And I said, Lord, I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I need you to help me to break through. And I didn't, it wasn't like, I decree in Jesus' name. I didn't know how to do any of that yet. I just knew, Lord, help. Here's the word. Lord, I'm praying your word. And, Lord, I, I'm just going to, I'm worshiping you. You know, it's just little baby steps. And each day that I got, went to work, I mean, it was really a rough environment. I, I would see a change. And at first, they mocked me. They, and I didn't go in there as church lady. You know, I'm born again, and praise the Lord, I didn't do any of that. I just thought, you know what, let them sense the spirit of the Lord on me. I had to honor my job, right, my position. And, but when it, the opportunity came, and the Lord opened that door, I shared the gospel. I, I was always pretty evangelistic, and I liked that environment. Well, it, it, they, they would mock me. They, they cussed like sailors. I mean, it was really a vile environment. I really mean it. I had someone wanted to fight me. <laughs> it, it was just, like, rough. And each day I prayed, and there were days that I thought, Lord, I am so discouraged. I think I want to quit here because it's not worth it to me. And the Lord said, no. You're to change the atmosphere there. And I'm like, oh, great. How am I going to do that? So prayer. It was decreeing the word and just standing. I was there by 18 months. By the time I left, and I kid you not, everyone was saved except two people. They, they, the atmosphere, I'm, I'm saying this is little old me that doesn't have what we have available to us today. We all have this ability and authority, every single I'm no different than any of you, because the power of the Word of God works. The power of Holy Spirit is in us. We have that dunamis power, that, that, that dunamis power that breaks things through. It's like a battering ram. That's why you keep at it, and you keep at it, and you keep at it. It's like a battering ram that breaks things open. I've seen God too many, too many times break through when I was the, the, the least of them, the minority, where I thought, how in the world is this going to change? See, but that's not my problem. That's his problem. He puts you in a situation then you know that God is going before you and he's going to be that rear guard. And so the one woman, uh, as far as I know to this day, who really gave me a hard time, she is in ministry in the Middle East. You know, God turned things around. You know why? Because the enemy doesn't want those people that you're going to be affiliated with to get saved. He wants you to give up. But you see, we have the greater one. It says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We have that authority. We are the ecclesia. We are to rule. We are to govern in our sphere. 